In a Swiss laboratory in 1943, young scientist Albert Hoffman accidentally touched his hand to his mouth while he was synthesizing a chemical intended to stimulate respiration and the nervous system. After ingesting the drug, he realized he had made something far more potent, what we now know as LSD. In the 1950s and 60s, Thousands of LSD studies were carried out after a group of pioneering psychiatrists showed that hallucinogenic drugs had therapeutic potential. It became the age of psychedelics. In the 50 years since this golden era, scientific progress in psychedelic research has been limited. A backlash against the hippie counterculture, the war on drugs, halted research into psychedelics. In 1971, the UK Parliament introduced the Misuse of Drugs Act, classifying psilocybin, LSD, and DMT as illegal Class A drugs. All further research on psychedelics was banned. The definition of a Schedule I drug, which is the most illegal classification, is a substance that has no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. Since the 1970s, there has been a strong advocacy to take cannabis off the Schedule I list. Cannabis has been found to improve many health issues, such as seizures, sleep disorders, and arthritis. Although cannabis still remains on the Schedule I list today, the evidence is so strong in favor of medicinal marijuana that it has become legalized in over half the U.S. states and many countries around the world. The legalization of cannabis has opened the door to re-examine the possible medical benefits of other currently illegal substances, like psilocybin mushrooms, LSD, MDMA, and DMT. The first new studies in over 30 years are finding that these so-called dangerous drugs can have a profound positive impact on mental health when used properly. Depression is a growing problem, and antidepressants continue not to work for up to half the people who take them. A recent study examined the treatment of 20 patients suffering from depression. Half took antidepressants, and half took psilocybin. After three months, the antidepressant effects were found to be greater for those taking psilocybin than for people taking typical antidepressants and therapy. Patients said they went from feeling totally disconnected with themselves in the world to connected and from repressing and avoiding emotions and memories to accepting them. Unlike antidepressants, which are taken daily, psilocybin therapy would take place a few times over a series of months until the patient decides that they no longer need it. Neuroscience suggests that psilocybin causes the default mode network, the part of the brain that is active when you're not focused on the outside world, to temporarily deactivate. The DMN is known as the safe network, for it is the part of the brain that ruminates and worries. The DMN is protective and considered evolutionarily adaptive, but it can become overly critical. When this occurs, people ruminate and worry more, bringing out depression. Psilocybin can make these brain communication pathways hyper-flexible. Following a therapeutic dose of psilocybin, patients start developing new habits and get out of the depressive cycle. In most cases, only a few sessions of psilocybin are needed to bring about permanent change. Other research has found a similar positive impact on depression with the use of LSD, DMT, and ketamine. The push for more research on psychedelics is growing fast, but we still need a much deeper understanding before this becomes mainstream.